All right, hey there guys, this is Ty from Table Flip Foundry. I was doing some work tonight and realized that this information um, or workflow that I'm working with tonight might be really helpful for you if you need to edit your files or uh, you like to do digital kit bashing. Uh, if you use Blender and you have the right artist um, putting out the right type of file, you can actually digital kit bash in an amazing way. And while I was doing this, I figured I'd shoot a, shoot a quick video for you guys and show you how to do it. Uh, let's take a look at Blender here. So uh, I'm not going to go into the fine details of Blender. Uh, presumably, you know at least enough to get you through this. So just make sure you, uh, you know, you get the basics down. There are plenty of Blender videos out there or tutorials out there. So we're going to kind of zip through um, some of the very, very beginner stuff. And we're going to we're going to kind of dig into a few of the uh, less less beginner things, not um, not expert by any means, but less beginner. So we're going to talk about an artist that is one of my f my favorite artists, um, and it's Velrock Art. And the sculptor, his name is Keaton. He, the way he does his sculpts is really, really cool in that he doesn't remesh his sculpts when he submits them to the to the community um the way he does his sculpts is he leaves each um each part of the sculpt as a separate object or mesh so here we can see this hat here just by looking at the mesh we can see that the mesh on his hand and the mesh on his hat don't match at all they're not similar in any way and this lets me know that most likely this hat is technically a separate shell from the rest of the body and if i didn't want the hat as part of this model i could technically remove it using uh, a function in blender so all of his models are done this way and so today we're going to try to piece together maybe a little just a little something basic um to just do a, a short qu quick kit bash so um let's find a different model this one's not very dynamic let's look for let's look at one of his newer models all right here he is oh yes this is this is a killer model right here so once we go in to load our model we're going to enter edit mode and this is where we can see the vertices and faces and edges of our model and let's say for example we're not a giant fan of the skull sword right let's say we want him to be holding uh just a, let's say a different a different sword maybe we can find something something else from one of his other models so we're gonna work on this guy let's go see if we can find a a different weapon that we like. Here's a Harangon Barbarian with an axe. All right, perfect. Let's use this axe. We're going to open this Harangon and we're going to actually keep the axe from this Harangon. Give me just a moment here. All right, so we can see the axe is separate. Now, once we're in edit mode, I'm going to put my mouse over the object and hit the L key as in Lima. And here's the axe. Only the axe is selected. I'm going to hit the P key to separate this selection. <clears throat> what this has done is this has created a new object for me. We're going to go back to uh, object mode and we're going to delete the Harangon, leaving us just this, <clears throat> uh, just this axe. So let's go ahead and bring in our, our fallen knight again. I'm going to rename this object as Battle Axe. All right, so we have a Battle Axe. Let's hide that for now. And let's have a look at this one. We'll get this sword separated out. So we go back into edit mode. We're going to hit L for selecting just the sword. I'm, I'm going to keep the sword in this case as a separate object, just in case I want it again. So now this sword is completely separate. So we're going to call this Skull Sword. And we're going to hide the Skull Sword. And we're going to bring in the Battle Axe. 
So here I'm going to just set an origin that I can work with. And we're just going to grab and move this around until we kind of like an orientation that might be appropriate for this character. And just like that, our fallen warrior can be joined. So I'm going to use, I think, control J for join. And now this battle axe is part of our model. And the great thing about Velrock art models is that almost every element for this character can be removed or added in this way. And if you look at a lot of the other characters, you'll notice he's got a, a sword sheath here. Well, he doesn't carry a sword anymore. So let's remove that sword sheath. So we're going to go in back into edit mode. Let's say we just don't want the sword sheath. We just select it, remove it, sword sheath gone. So not every artist does this. A lot of artists will, will do something called remesh where it'll go in and create a new mesh over the top of this and sort of eliminate all of the separate shells. And that's good for certain purposes. But if you come across an artist who who has all of these objects as separate shells on there in their work, you can digitally kit bash so much. So let's say I don't like this shoulder piece or maybe I found a different shoulder piece on one of his models. I could take and I could split this shoulder piece off. And now he's just a little less armored. Or this cloak. What if I found another cloak? Same thing. And we go into edit mode. We can hit L. And we can separate this cloak off. And now he doesn't have a cloak. He's just got a hood. Uh, and now we're starting to look at more of an executioner character, right? So we went from being sort of this hardcore veteran knight looking guy with heavy armor to almost an executioner. Um, sometimes you might be surprised at what hides underneath a mask, depending on the model. Um, but let's see if we can remove the mask here. There's a face under there. It's scarred up. Oh, the scars. I wasn't expecting that. So with just a few clicks, we are now able to pick and choose options for this model that we can then export as an STL. Now, I did join this axe um, into the model, but it's not entirely necessary to join it. So let's split that back off. And let me teach you how to export this. So up in this top right here, we have um, we have some options to hide and, and show uh, a lot of different objects in the viewport. What we need to do when we export is select the objects that we want to export. So even if I had everything on, if I only select the model and the ax, those are the only parts that are going to be exported. So we're going to go to file export STL. And this selection right here is not natively selected. So it's very important that we, uh, that we select that. So we're going to hit selection only, and then we're just going to find a location to export that model. We're going to call this kit bash. And now it's going to export just the selected part of the model. All right. So here's our kit bash model. Now you might notice in Lychee Slicer, it'll show up red. A lot of these models show up red because Lychee Slicer has to sort of interpret um, the meshes overlapping each other. Oftentimes, almost let's say 99% of the time, this repair 3D model will fix it for us. Um, but even if it doesn't, it won't be a problem. But here's our new character. So we started with the Fallen Knight with the sword. I'm gonna bring him in too. And in a couple of minutes, we were able to create an almost entirely different character with a def definitely a different aesthetic. Now, when it comes to tabletop gaming, this is a good way to give yourself a little army with variation. I don't like like super repetitive miniatures. I want them to be different. So even though they have the same pose, 
um, the models are definitely different. So we could create some like army or tribes or bandits or whatever we wanted out of models like this really easily. So um, there's a little bit of, of kit bashing. It's kind of fun to do if, um, you know, if you don't uh, want to use a website like Eldritch Foundry, um, which are fantastic for this type of thing, but maybe you like this particular artist and you want something in this style. Um, you can subscribe to Velrock Art, get all of his models, and every single model from him works in this way. It's it's actually really, it's really cool. So um, hopefully that was informative or useful or whatever. And uh, if you do create anything um, like this and you want to show it off, show up at our Discord and let's see the models you create i would i would love to see what kind of crazy stuff you can you can put together using all of the assets that that are available through velric art i even think he puts out files with just weapons or just armor pieces or whatever specifically so you could create your own your own army and stuff so um anyway guys thank you so much for watching um hey like and subscribe you have to do all of the you know the uh, the like and subscribe stuff, the YouTube stuff. And uh, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. Bye.